So for the second shutdown, because we we were fairly able to switch over the first time, so um, when we went to our carryout model again, we were able to do it. Unfortunately, our food is um, very beautiful and it's kind of made a la minute and, and to be personalized. So we are able to execute well, but we're not McDonald's. Um, we're meant more for an experience. So luckily people enjoyed our carry out. One really unique thing we did or had to do was that um, for New Year's Eve, people are really love our Irish New Year's Eve. Um, and we made that like a special package for everyone. We did a really nice menu of a filet um, and a fish option. And we sent everyone home because people weren't drinking in-house. We did a special pickleback shot package up for everyone. So that was something kind of fun and unique we did. Uh, but of course, being shut down in November, like right at the height of our supposed, what's supposed to be our busy time, that was really rough, especially after experiencing so much shutdown prior. I'd say it's a toss up between people's fears, thoughts, and emotions around everything, and dealing with, of course, your staff and trying to make sure that they're provided for. That was probably our number one issue or heartache. Um, but then, of course, the, the, the sales overall were pretty devastating. It's pretty hard for a restaurant to make money on any given day, even like a great day. Um, so when you're shut down completely and only doing carry out, you're spending more on your carry out items. You're spending a lot of money still on your, you know, place of business, electricity, things like that. It's not going to be utilized. Um, and of course, you're missing out on all of your alcohol sales. I think every human felt this, but I think especially for business owners and business owners that are more in a people-to-people -people um, business like we are. It felt like the rules were always changing and you were always holding your breath. You know, are we gonna reopen? Are we not gonna reopen? We're supposed to reopen. Oh wait, no, she's extending it. Um, oh, you get to do 25%. Everyone knows in the restaurant industry, 25% equals zero. <laughs> um, it, like you will never, you still won't make a profit at that rate and it almost costs you more because you have to do more to be open. So that, those hurdles were, were definitely more extreme, I think, than people ever saw or would notice. Um, we dealt with it well. We, of course, just took away the certain amount of shares that we were allowed to have, and we followed all the rules, and we were super cleanly. Um, but that those are hurdles, especially budgeting, things like that. And again, um, looking out for your employees, how are they going to make it on 25% or just carry out or whatever. Um, so those were definite challenges. And again, the supply chain shortage that happened, that's been going on for two years now. So yeah, it's been kind of a bumpy road, but the hospitality is kind of bumpy <laughs> to begin with, so. We're meant for experience to sit and enjoy. That's why we designed the club. Um, so carry out is fine, but not ideal. Coming back during the time, it was, it was honestly uh, scary. I mean, everybody was scared. You know, you, you didn't know if, uh, Sometimes you wake up feeling a little funny and you're like, I, do I have it? Should I go to work? Should I call in? Should I do this or that? Um, but at the end of the day, we, you got to do your job. And uh, coming back now, I mean, we've been at full capacity for a while now. And thankfully, everybody's been pretty healthy and happy here, so feeling good about work now. I would say uh, trying to create like an environment for everybody to feel comfortable was difficult, especially with rules changing constantly. Mask wearing was tough. Uh, we have pretty friendly clientele though, so a lot of the enforcements weren't that hard. You know, wearing masks and things like that to your table, which a lot of people debate on it all day. Um, honestly, I didn't find it that challenging. I know number-wise, it wasn't very keen for businesses. Oh yeah, uh, I mean, we're a face-to-face -face business all the time, so kind of losing that and you feel a little disconnected with your with your staff even not just customers sometimes you know but uh, it's, it's hard to be smiling and talk all day when you're wearing face coverings you know I feel we're the busiest we've been in a while I'm not sure how much hours affect that I think people are just trying to get back out and get back to normal and have some fun uh, we definitely get a late night push you know people around Oxford are used to the bars staying open a little bit later Sometimes we try and adhere to that, but 
it's it makes it easier to to play by the beat of how business is looking that day. So instead of having to stay up until 2 a.m. every night and things like that, uh, makes makes it easier. I fell into this job. I, I came from, I was working at a dog kennel before I was offered a job here and I started running food and eventually offered me a bartending position and trained me how to do everything. You can know everything about the bar, but until you're back here and pulling beers and talking to people all day and doing your song and dance, uh, I just say expect to make a lot of friends and just try hard, man. That's, you get you get through the toughest of rushes sometimes, you know. But, just hang tough and do your thing. Part time is fun, it really is, but it's very challenging at times. Customers are easy, it's just when there's 2,000 of them in here, yeah, it's a little, <laughs> be tough. COVID came at a time where everybody was afraid to be around each other and we were more like spread out, but uh, you got to see the community come together. Recent events included, Oxford's really good at coming together. And, you know, people were supporting businesses because they wanted to see them succeed, not just because they didn't want to cook that night or anything like that. You know, was, they were coming out, they were giving us business, they, they were checking on us and making sure that we were still doing okay while we're trying to make sure everybody else is still doing okay at the same time. So it taught me that, uh, I'm not originally from here, but it taught me that Oxford is a really tight community and they step up together when it needs to happen. I would say most have. We still, still now, still hear, oh yeah, I'm just coming out now. I haven't been out in two years. Um, we have a lot of new faces, which is great. So for those that have been looking to get out, um, and maybe some of the restaurants they used to go to aren't open anymore. So we do have a good mix of like some old and new. I would say maybe there are some customers that we haven't seen, but. I'm sure a lot of people's lives changed during the two years too, like maybe they had children or they moved or something like that as well. But most of our regulars we've seen again. Yes, of course. Um, everyone talks about like the supply chain issues and that's a very real thing. Um, and I try to actually avoid that because I don't really believe in excuses. Um, however, sometimes reality does play out. So it, it, it's always just a different item here or there. Like we, didn't, we wouldn't have some of our Irish imports for months at a time. Um, even just two weeks ago, no one could have fried cream cheese for about three weeks. So we did slim down the menu a bit to items that we know we could get and that we could prepare well. Um, during the shutdown, we couldn't provide our salmon because there was not a good quality salmon to be had. So we were gonna serve guests a lower quality. I know that happens sometimes in places, but we don't do that. Um, so just a slim down menu that we can execute beautifully all day every day is what we were going for. We did change our hours, I think most places did. Um, we did reduce because uh, due to, you know, employment issues and again it takes a lot of money to be team be open. Um, so the night times are busier and people are kind of falling back into their normal schedule of going out on Fridays and Saturdays. Yeah, I would say uh, night times are still definitely the busiest. Absolutely. Uh, pro probably ever since shutdown, everyone was saying, when are you going to bring brunch back? When are you going to bring brunch back? Um, and so that just happened um, a few weeks ago. And we've been, you know, back open for a while. But yeah, we had to build the business back and kind of get back, get back to what we were used to before we could add more days. That's a great question. <laughs> um, I think everyone is changing their definition of normal. Um, I think those that really like to go out and enjoy their lives, I mean, that's what I do. I own a restaurant, it doesn't mean I cook at home. <laughs> I would prefer to go out and enjoy the experience. So I think that if that was part of your life, um, then that will definitely continue. I'm sure some people will have some hesitancy and I'm sure that, um, you know, there's there seems to be a lot of factors that have been playing out over the last couple of years. So. In this very current situation, you know, inflation is very high, um, and it's, it's always talked about, which is part of the problem with inflation, is that it, it makes people a little bit more worrisome to go out um, because of cost. So, you know, I, I believe, we're, we wanna keep this place going for the next 60 years. And I have faith in that. I have faith in what we do and our model, and I think that and I hope that people still go out, put their phones down, and enjoy an experience. So yes, I think there will be some normalcy in the restaurant world. Um, I think it might be a slightly 
reduced um, capacity for some people. You know, like back in the day, not even two years ago, but even if you look at back 10 years ago, people were just filling arenas and just kind of going a little bit more wild and crazy than they do nowadays. Um, so I think that's changed a little bit, but I do think that, that yes, people, especially now, no masks, people are comfortable again being in front of people and that's what it's all about. Like I said, we're in a people to people business. That's why we built an Irish pub and that's why we're here because like our vision was, you know, my daughter was only one when we opened this place. She's nine now. We've seen people date here and then get engaged. We've even had marriages here. We watch people have their, their children here and bring them in. And so I hope that all still exists as we move forward in this, you know, environment, culture, whatever you want to say. Like um, the pub atmosphere should be welcoming and fun and loving. And so, you know, I hope that people breathe and relax and can get back to that.